Now we have some updates for you on the 2024 presidential race. GOP candidate and former Vice President Mike Pence has dropped out five months after launching his bid. He said during a speech at the Republican Jewish Coalition conference this weekend, it's become clear to me it's not my time. I've decided to suspend my campaign for president effective today. Elsewhere on the campaign trail, actress Cheryl Hines has slammed President Joe Biden for not providing 2024 presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy with a security detail after an intruder was arrested twice after trying to break into her home with RFK Jr. in Los Angeles. Hines told TMZ, quote, I respect President Biden and the administration, and at the same time, I feel like it's a political strategy. The latest fundraising and polling numbers suggest whether they like it or not, RFK Jr. is going to be a factor in the 2024 race. Check out this staggering fundraising haul from Kennedy. According to a Kennedy super PAC, in just the first six hours after he launched his bid on October 9th, he raked in $11 million in six hours. Campaign coffers filling up fast. Poll numbers. PBS poll shows Kennedy drawing 16 percent of the vote in a hypothetical three-way race with Biden and Trump. In this one, Biden leading in that poll with 44 percent to Trump's 37. Yeah, so the real question now is whether RFK Jr.'s involvement in the general election, um, how that affects the race. And, you know, a lot of people on the right who were very who were thinking very favorable of RFK Jr. based on the things he was saying and that he was taking on Joe Biden and calling out, you know, Biden for uh, for you know being an insincere Democrat or for all the changes that have gone on in the Democratic Party on all, so many issues. Well, now he's a presence of the general election and a lot of the appeal he had to independents and conservatives is still there, but could end up taking votes away from Donald Trump, which I have said numerous times, I don't care about at all. I think people should vote for the candidate they want to vote for. No one is owed your vote. I'm generally supportive of third party and independent bids. They are able to capture votes because the major parties are overlooking issues that matter to the people. So so whoever, you know, ignores an RFK Jr. at, at their peril and then suffers for it, sorry, that's democracy. Um, that's just the way it is. So I, it doesn't. I'm not, you know, decrying or bemoaning this could that this could negatively affect Trump or Biden, whatever is the case. But it seems like it's a reality now. We're looking at the polls that it could actually help Biden overcome Trump at the finish line. Yeah, I think it's ridiculous to assume that Biden is not giving security detail for political reasons. I think that there are a lot of people that are very high profile that are running for president right now that don't have security detail because of his family's history. He deserves security detail. I think it's a little ridiculous. There are a lot of people who have folks break into their homes because of their high profile status and don't get security detail from the United States president. I think that's a bit ridiculous. And I agree with you that it's also ridiculous that people saying he's some kind of spoiler candidate that he's going to take votes away from Joe Biden, then there's some kind of rivalry there. The polling has shown that a lot of his base leans more conservative. I think if you want to make the case that there's some votes to be grabbed by anyone, it's the 40 percent of Americans that don't show up and vote for federal elections. Let's try and get those people out to the polls. There's a totally gettable base of people that have not decided to vote simply because there hasn't been a candidate that they believe in. So give them something to believe in. That's your job as someone running for public office. This idea that RFK Jr. is pulling votes away from either major party is insane when we have 40 percent of the country not showing up to vote for a president at all. Those are people that any, either party and a third party candidate could easily get. So what do we have to say about Mike Pence? No longer in the race, um, was basically doomed the entire time, given the level of dislike there is for him in the Republican base. Um, he is perceived fairly or not fairly at all for having uh, betrayed Trump, be betrayed the MAGA core for not co-signing the, um, the efforts to have a different outcome in the election that went on. He's seen as a traitor for that reason, and so his you know, political future was pretty much written from that moment on. Oh, poor Mike Pence. He's not exciting, Robbie. I don't think he was going to get uh, very far in this race at all. And I don't think it has much to do even with Trump's base not liking him. Uh, I think it has everything to do with he's just not an exciting guy. He's not a man of the moment. There's a, a famous quote. I'm not sure who it's by. Uh, maybe it'll come to me. But it's that a leader 
defines the moment. It doesn't follow what a leader doesn't follow what the people want. Mike Pence is not someone who defines the moment uh, for the American people whatsoever. We need a candidate that's actually going to speak to the issues that matter for a lot of people. Mike Pence is another one of those candidates that has followed the book, essentially, for what a presidential candidate should talk like, sound like, what kinds of things they should say and what's off limits. And people are so sick of candidates like that. So I don't think he ever really had a shot. I think it's commendable he threw in the towel this early. Good for him. Yeah. You know, there's so many candidates running against Trump um, on the Republican side, very few of them catching fire in any meaningful way. Um, Ron DeSantis has some level of support. Vivek Ramaswamy has some level of support. And Nikki Haley has some level of support. And then also in the when they, you know, match these people up against Biden, um, Haley does pretty well. This is even though she has foreign policy views that I don't really agree with and don't represent my you know, contingent of the right uh, movement. Hers are very similar to uh, Chris Christie's and to and to Mike Pence's, uh, but she's gotten a little bit more personality. I think it, it does come down to personality. It comes down to something because she uh, polls better in, in the general election. But those four at least have something to say for their candidacies at this point, even though obviously Donald Trump is running away with it, um, of course, is in such an interesting legal situation that maybe people are thinking, might as well see how this shakes out and just, just hang around. But um, the other candidates are not, you know, they're not catching right. Nobody's voted yet. So if you, you know, you want to stay in until we had a primary or two underway, I, I, that's perfectly legi legitimate. Everyone has the right to run for president if they want. But um, there's, there's no evidence whatsoever in my, my mind that conservative voters um, want to empower Mike Pence as the, as the candidate. Um, and, and you're right. It's not just it's not just the January uh, 6th stuff. It's it is personality and you know some some of his views. I, I don't know. He I, obviously he was vice president under Donald Trump, but um, his foreign policy views are again back in the more I think hawkish tradition that preceded Trump. I don't think Republicans want to go back to that. I mean, the, a substantial number of Republicans just just want Trump again. Um, they don't. I don't think they want a break. With, and then some Republicans maybe want to break with Trump's antics, with Trump's, you know, kind of self-sabotage in some of the perils he's gotten himself into. But I, I don't think they want to break with Trump's policies. There's a small number of Republicans. They occupy disproportionately prominent places in media on occasion who want to go back to an older version of the Republican Party. There's no evidence the voters want to do that. Yeah, there's a huge base of the Republican Party now. I mean, people who identify as conservatives who are extremely anti-interventionist. They don't want to see U.S. dollars going to foreign forever wars. And I think that's a good thing uh, that we have folks on both sides pressuring the mainstream party to uplift candidates that are not going to support more of the same American foreign policy. I think uh, it's, it's unfortunate that now Dean Phillips entering the race is also more of the same on the Democratic side. He has very establishment candidate views when it comes to foreign policy. I don't really see anyone shaking things up right now from this being a Trump-Biden-Kennedy general election. Hmm. He is, however, not an 80-year-old man. There is always that. Mm -hmm. And in other 2024 news, comedian and commentator Bill Maher received some pushback when he expressed support for President Joe Biden's Democratic challenger from Minnesota, Dean Phillips. Dean Phillips. He's from Minnesota. He's Jewish. He's 54. Did I mention he's 54? <laughs> and... He, he loves Biden. He says exactly what I say. Did a great job, but don't do it again. That's right. Uh, family, uh, filth-made millionaire from the uh, families in the organic vodka business. <laughs> Dean Phillips. I'm getting behind him for president of the United States. How about you? <laughs> you know anything about him? Um, yeah, more than I know about Mike Johnson two days ago. Um, Should we welcome this? Is this good? I, I guess, and I was listening to your interview with Governor Cuomo, who was saying that we need a lively primary, and that doesn't take away from anything that Biden has accomplished, which I think we all agree right. is a tremendous amount. The issue with what Dean Phillips is doing is, um, A, there are a lot of kind of like Steve Schmidt is a senior advisor to him. I got an email today from Andrew Yang who has not revealed himself, I think, to have the best interests of the Democratic Party winning elections at heart. <laughs> In 2019, he was maxed out donation from Harlan Crow, who bankrolls Clarence Thomas. Um, you know, there are things about him that I don't 
like I, I appreciate the enthusiasm and these are issues we should be talking about, but every vote in 2024 is going to count. Hmm. What did you make of that, Jessica? That's from Jessica that Tarlov, uh, another uh, another TV Jessica, who I've been on with Fox. Uh, and I, she's like the liberal voice on, on Fox. Very lovely person. But what did you make of what she said there? Wasn't a convincing argument either way. I don't know if she likes Dean Phillips or not. I don't even think she said anything about Dean Phillips other than she knows a little bit more about him than Mike Johnson. Does that qualify him for the highest office in the United States government? Stay tuned. Maybe. Yeah. It just might. Because he's 54. I think you're going to need to be a little bit more than younger than Joe Biden to be the candidate that we pick. I mean, they didn't even make the case for why his policies didn't even mention what they are, but why they would make him a good candidate. If they think Joe Biden did a good job, how would Dean Phillips continue in doing a good job if he takes over at the midterm? I mean, there's really nothing there of substance. Hmm. All right. We'll have more rising right after this. Stay tuned.